Mars is in the spotlight now, with both SpaceX and NASA preparing their long-range plans to send humans to the Red Planet. But Mars is an inhospitable environment, especially because of its tenuous and poisonous atmosphere of carbon dioxide. Did Mars have a better atmosphere in the past? How did it get destroyed? And what can we do to replenish it, to make the planet more habitable in the future? Now, if you were to travel to the surface of Mars right now without a proper spacesuit, your life would become immediately unpleasant. With a dramatically lower atmospheric pressure, all the air in your lungs would come rushing out. And without the oxygen in your bloodstream, you would pass out within seconds and then asphyxiate within a couple of minutes. Mars sucks. And the biggest reason why Mars is so hostile is because of its terrible atmosphere. Here on Earth, you're experiencing a column of air pressing down on you, enabling all that breathing that you seem to like to do. The atmosphere on Mars, on the other hand, is only 1% the pressure that we have on Earth. Furthermore, it's made up almost entirely of carbon dioxide, which, I'm sure you know, is poisonous to breathe. The lack of a thick atmosphere means that Mars is cold. So cold, all the water on the planet is locked up in eternal polar ice caps so cold that carbon dioxide freezes out of the atmosphere and falls as snow in the North Pole. Just in case you weren't aware, temperatures need to be negative 78.5 degrees Celsius for carbon dioxide to freeze. Was Mars always this way? What changed to make the planet so terrible? And what could we do to bring it back? In the early solar system, Mars was much more like Earth with its own planetary magnetosphere. This was present for the first 400 million years or so of Mars's history. And then about 4.2 billion years ago, this Martian magnetosphere shut off, leaving the planet without any protection from the sun's radiation and solar wind. Over the course of 500 million years, Mars changed from a warm, wet environment to the frozen, airless desert we know today. In early 2017, planetary scientists working with NASA's Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution Spacecraft, or MAVEN, released a research paper explaining in gruesome detail exactly what happened to the Martian atmosphere. And the blame comes, of course, from the sun, and it's constantly blowing, ever-present, why won't you give us a break, solar wind. The solar wind, of course, is the constant stream of particles blasting off from the sun. The Earth is protected thanks to our ever-present magnetosphere, but Mars wasn't so lucky. According to the researchers, most of the gas that was ever-present in the Martian atmosphere was just blown away into space. Mars didn't have a magnetosphere, and it has much less mass and gravity, so it was unable to hold on to the atmospheric particles. The atmosphere of Mars is gone. In fact, the early sun was even worse, with much more powerful ultraviolet radiation and intense solar winds. If life did form on Mars back in the early solar system, it would have needed to work fast, with a very short time when the planet wasn't a freezing cold airless desert. There might still be pockets of life hidden beneath the surface of Mars, but the party's over. So how did researchers figure this out? They used MAVEN to measure the amount of two different isotopes of argon gas. Argon doesn't react, so it can't be trapped in rocks the way other elements can. One of these isotopes is lighter and escaped into space more easily, so they measured the ratio of the two isotopes in both the surface of Mars and its atmosphere to figure out how quickly it was lost into space. And from there, they could calculate how quickly the other gases were blown away too. Now, as soon as anyone learns about the atmosphere of Mars and how much it sucks, they want to fix it. And it might actually be possible. And I'll talk about some ideas, but first I'd like to thank skydiving stormtrooper Robert Eidson, Rod Courtright, and the rest of our 810 patrons for their generous support. If you love what we're doing and you want to get in on the action, head over to patreon.com slash universe today. It turns out that the easiest solution to restoring the atmosphere of Mars is to destroy the sun. Without the sun, there'd be no solar wind. Okay, fine, then maybe that's a little bit overkill. But if you could block the sun's solar wind, then you might have a shot. Now, we did a whole episode on creating artificial magnetospheres just a couple of episodes ago, and one cool idea was recently presented by Dr. Jim Green, the director of NASA's Planetary Science Division. This idea would position an electromagnetic shield at the Sun-Mars L1 Lagrange point. 
and the shield would block the solar wind coming from the sun, protecting Mars in its wake. And this would have the advantage of protecting Martian astronauts from deadly solar radiation, but it would also protect and restore Mars itself. Even though Mars has had billions of years to lose its atmosphere, it still has something, however tenuous. That's because volcanic outgassing from the planet's interior balances out the atmosphere lost to the solar wind. Without the solar wind whisking away the atmosphere, this volcanic outgassing would thicken and warm the atmosphere by an average of about 4 degrees Celsius. Now that doesn't sound like much, but it's enough to melt the northern carbon dioxide polar ice cap on Mars, leading to an even stronger greenhouse effect. This would warm the planet enough to melt the water ice in the polar caps, creating oceans on the surface of Mars. Not like it had in the past, but still, oceans. Within a couple of generations, Mars would be a dramatically different world, much more Earth-like and ready for exploration. A thicker atmosphere would provide a range of benefits, including allowing larger payloads to be sent to Mars, an aerobrake using the Martian atmosphere. It would provide increased shielding against galactic cosmic radiation, which wouldn't be stopped by the L1 shield. It would provide a thicker atmosphere for oxygen extraction and allow open air greenhouses for farming food. Future colonists could explore the outside of the surface of Mars without a pressure suit, just a gas mask to provide breathable air and prevent carbon dioxide poisoning. But obviously, we'll want to go further. We'll want to make the air actually breathable. And according to Robert Zubrin, the founder of the Mars Society, this is a long-term goal that should be achievable. In that thicker atmosphere of carbon dioxide, we could bring in plants that would do the same job they do here on Earth, taking in carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. As the atmosphere gets thicker and more Earth-like, you could bring in insects and other tough animals to keep the ecosystem going. It might take thousands of years, but we should eventually be able to make Mars a place that humans can walk outside without a spacesuit and breathe normally. It's pretty mind-boggling. The fact that Mars lost its atmosphere so long ago is a tragedy, but it does look like there's a way we could stop the atmospheric loss and even rebuild it, making Mars a reasonably habitable world again. Being able to grow plants, to walk outside without a pressure suit, to be able to breathe the air on an alien world. It's a worthy goal for humanity, I think. Of course, to make Mars more habitable, we'll need to make it less habitable for any life forms currently tucked away in corners on the planet. What do you think? Is it okay for us to modify Mars to suit our needs, potentially destroying its existing biosphere? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Time for your playlist. All about the atmosphere of Mars and ideas about terraforming the red planet. First up, a really cool video from NASA that shows why the Martian atmosphere is bleeding away. Another video from NASA about one of the mechanisms that contributed to Martian atmosphere loss and more information about how the solar winds strip the air off Mars. I'll talk at the SETI Institute about the discoveries made about the Martian atmosphere. And finally, a longer lecture from NASA about MAVEN's observations about the atmosphere on Mars. And that starts right now. Then you might do a shot. Let me do that again.